You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. This is episode 172. My name is Clark from Five Card Guys on Instagram at fivecardguys.com. With me co-hosting as usual is John, who is trade you at recess on Instagram. Our regu- other regular co-host, Hyung, is actually away this week, but filling in for him as he usually does is our good friend Will, the fourth co-host of Cards to the Moon. Welcome back, Will. Hello, hello. Good to have you back. All right, so off the top, I wanted to touch upon a couple of things. First, just because everyone on social media that's into the hobby has talked about it already, uh, we might as well add our two cents. What do you guys think about LeBron signing with Tops again and your initial thoughts on the dual one-of-one auto card of LeBron and his son, Bronny? I'm sure you saw it all over Twitter, all over Instagram. Are you guys excited or is it just whatever? And I, I, I want to know what John thinks first because okay. he's... You know, yeah, love LeBron. I could, I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm not going to hit on LeBron that much. Okay, LeBron signing with the Sun. That that's pretty darn cool. I think the images sure. look like it wasn't sticker art. I I have to imagine it's not. I think that is uh, that's awesome, man. I people have been dying for LeBron autos. They've been dying for MJ autos, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is huge. Um. Bronny James, uh, well, I don't know where he's ranked. I, I, to be honest, I'm not quite sure how he'll kind of turn up as mm. a as a pro. Um, if if it gets to that, he certainly. I don't think he's on the tra- trajectory to be anywhere near his dad. So I think, you know, for now, while there's hype and he hasn't shown his NBA abilities or lack thereof, I don't know. Not to knock on him too much, but I think mm-hmm. at, for this point, at this point in his career, where there's hype. And his uh, his dad LeBron is still killing it in the NBA. I think it's a it's great timing. I think the dual one of one is going to be a monstrous card, and I'm sure there's going to be some serious bounties on that card from people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What What do you think, Will? I mean, for us, because of the age that we are, a lot of these father son dual autographs, we're more interested in the sons. Like, for example, mm. Vladdy Sr., Vladdy Jr., or right. like Ken Griffey Sr., Ken Griffey Jr. We're, you know, we like the junior. We're more closer to the juniors in age. And so, so like, I'm excited about, you know, the possibility of a LeBron auto in a Topps product. And I've already talked many times about how I'm not a big fan of Panini. So I like that Topps is... Like we're gonna see some tops content or some tops cards and and some of the stuff that's already come out it, it looks nice like I like it and yeah. so I think it's pretty cool for LeBron to be signing that and for him to be back in tops kind of umbrella uh, but I think this card has legs because it's gonna be Bronny's first card and so kids who are growing up now watching basketball you know they're gonna. They're gonna find it pretty cool that Bronny signed a card with his dad. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I'm with you guys there. Um, do you think it devalues any of his current autos? I, like, does he have any autographed cards beside his rookie year? I think there's a oh, like you mean LeBron's? Do you value right, yeah. LeBron's autos? Well, I mean, that's what I'm trying to think. Is does he have any autographed cards beyond his rookie cards? I was chasing LeBron's auto in Space Jam, so he definitely oh, has yeah. he definitely oh, yeah, has true. autos. That's true. And uh, yeah, I came nowhere close. If anyone wants a <laughs> green refractor Porky Pig out of ninety nine, I'm I'm your man. <laughs> Shoot me a message. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let me phrase it another way, or look at it another way. Do you think his autograph cards that are going to come out are going to sustain its value? Like the new ones. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That are, you know, not his non-rookie years. Yeah. Oh. Beyond the initial hype, of course. Right. I think this was the concern that we kind of chatted about Tim Duncan, where 
Right. I think everybody, oh, I mean, a lot of pure basketball fans are really looking forward to Tim Duncan's auto. Um, it was similar set to, for Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, and then Panini decided to just flood the market with the autos, like everywhere in every product. Um, right. So I'm really hoping that they don't do that for LeBron. I'm, I'm hoping they don't, that, they don't do that for Duncan's card. But especially for LeBron, I think if they keep it pretty rare, uh, similar to how Upper Deck did it with the Space Jam, like I don't even know, like I don't know if I've ever seen the Space Jam auto or how many of them exist, but um, I'm hoping they limited, limit LeBron's autos in each product, you know, less than five or something very rare to keep, keep the value up. Cause if they, you know, if LeBron in a single tops release season of 40, 50 products and they release, hundreds upon hundreds i don't know it's not going to do well for the new lebron tops cards but i think i don't people holding on to the upper deck cards like the og lebron uh rookie autos and stuff uh, i don't think they'll have i think it'll attract more to the vintage that sort of if you want to even call it modern like modern vintage autos uh, i think those autos will be perfectly fine but any of the new lebrons if especially they they print them in numbers i mean assign them in numbers yeah, that's that's gonna be a shame. Yeah, I feel like it's everything in this modern game where you know base autos are almost meaningless and valueless. So it's you know the cream rises to the top, and you're gonna be looking for like the super fractor auto and the out of five auto and the out of fifty auto and stuff right. like those will hold tons of value. But yeah, like right. if they're gonna just do base auto, base veteran autos for LeBron, it's like it's kind of cool. But I mean, maybe that's good too, right? Like it's more more fans of LeBron get to have an auto of his, and not have to pay thousands of True. bucks. Good point. Good point. Um, hypo- yep. Hypothetical, assuming flawless product Panini gets bought out or National Treasures gets bought out by Tops. Would you rather have LeBron's RPA or LeBron's flawless logo man or an NT logo man auto? NT logo man auto. Should have been or... a, that should have been a one v one question. <laughs> <laughs> like LeBron's Le- LeBron's exquisite RPA, his rookie upper deck exquisite RPA, or the first LeBron logo man auto. Oh, I'm gonna go with exquisite RPA. You know, I think we talked about it before. Like, to a certain extent, the logo man. I don't know. I think this is overhyped in little, some ways. Little trendy. Little bit. Yeah, I hear you. Good question, though. Yeah, definitely should have saved that for a one v one. But um, I'm sure we. I'm sure you have another one for later on in the show. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about. Actually, I was just before we go on to the second thing for off the top. Brawny in one of the lists is regarded as the number 36 top prospect going to 2024. Okay. So there you go. All right. The second thing, uh, we know that for baseball fans, MLB free agency is here. And the number one free agent that everyone is salivating over is, of course, Matt Chapman. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. It is Shohei Otani. Okay. And... From a hobby standpoint, this is the question I want to ask you. From a hobby standpoint, which team do you think would give Shohei the biggest bump in value? Or does it matter what team he goes on because Shohei is Shohei? Okay, so I'm going to give you, before you answer, the top 10 teams considered in a few reports that I've read that are believed to be pursuing Shohei aggressively. Okay, so you got the New York Mets, the New York Yankees, the LA Dodgers. That's a given, right? Then you got... The Boston Red Sox, Chicago Cubs, LA Angels, of course, wants to keep him somehow, which I don't think will happen. And then I would say the bottom four, longer shots, San Francisco Giants, the World Series champs, Texas Rangers, Seattle Mariners, and your Toronto Blue Jays. Top 10 in terms of pursuing Shohei aggressively. So what do you guys think? Is there a team where he goes on definitely, you'll see a bump in value, or do you think it not matters because Shohei is a unicorn? I mean, the boring answer we all know is going to be Yankees and Dodgers. Like, there's no question. (laughs) Um, I feel like Dodgers, 
is probably the better pick for the hobby because I feel like Yankees, they kind of get hated on, right? You, I mean, regardless, there's a bit of like Yankee Dodgers fatigue for those outside of those markets. Um, but I find that generally people outside of LA don't hate it on the Dodgers as much as people outside of New York hating on the Yankees. So I'm going to say Dodgers. Um, personally, you know, I think the three of us are clamoring for the Jays. Like that would be, that would be ridiculous. Um, but my second, honestly, my second choice hobby wise, uh, I think it'd be Seattle Man- Mariners. Um, I want to see him. Really? Yeah, I, w- I want to see him with the, you know, the Ichiro throwback. You know, like when we when I look at dual cool. when I look at dual autos that have like Lemieux, Crosby, same team. I think it looks so like the the card image, the the way the card looks looks beautiful. Gretzky, McDavid. So like, who yeah. wouldn't want Ichiro? You know, and Otani, same jersey, Seattle Mariners. I think that'd be pretty cool. Agreed. Yeah, for for the hobby, Seattle's a sexy pick just for that that dual dual auto. Yeah. But speaking of dual autos, we do have Yusei Kikuchi. Oh, <laughs> nice dual auto of Yusei Kikuchi and Shohei Otani. I, I posted in our group chat that uh, right. Yusei Kikuchi was like a, a senior in uh, Shohei's high school. So maybe maybe uh, <laughs> something's going on there. Maybe maybe they'll talk and he'll come over. So fanatics high school RPAs. That would be sick. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw Will post that in our group chat, I'm like, just, just, I'm just don't grasping, get up, just okay? grasping at straws. <laughs> you know, I think I think Shohei's a Scott Boris client, right? I'm pretty sure Scott Boris is uh, is his agent. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that and sounds Boris. Right. What I know, like I've seen him do it so many times, he always puts Toronto's name in the ring. But he, Why is that? like, he, I don't know. He just always uses us, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, Toronto's interested, and Toronto's gonna throw a lot of money." And then the superstar doesn't come to Toronto. It's it's really annoying. Yeah, <laughs> a damn agent. Um. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Yankees, Dodgers, obviously, um, big market teams. Uh, theoretically, you have more hobbyists in those bigger cities clamoring to get uh, Shohei cards in their team uniform. Um, so so that's the boring answer. I think that's the right answer. But if Shohei does come to the Jays, um, yes, wishful thinking perhaps. But if he does, you can bet that I'm going to get an autographed card of Shohei in a Jays uniform. Oh, I don't ooh. care what it Every is, Jays. what set it comes from. Oh, that's going to be a hot ticket <laughs> yeah. item in town. No question. Oh, blue and a, a blue refractor. Oh, man. Yeah. Just take my money. Take it all. <laughs> wow. You're, you're going to join me in the uh, non rookie first year, <laughs> vet, right. first year of a player in your team's jersey card. Shohei. That's right Shohei up my Z. alley. Show is the only exception I'll make that yeah. for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that will we'll, you know that'll be big news once once it breaks. So we'll keep an eye on where Shohei eventually ends up. Okay, let's just move on to hobby headlines. All right, we're in November and 2023 is almost done. Sports card market, the economy in general is still down. So if you're not grail hunting because you just don't have much disposable income right now maybe there's another way to enjoy the hobby on a budget and and that's what made me think and we've talked about it before in a past episode but i want to revisit it and that's the joy of set collecting and i don't just mean getting all the cards from a particular set in a given year but more like what i did with the home field advantage case hits from 2022 tops which i'm happy to report by the way i completed the set of 30 and I know some guys in our aforementioned chat groups says uh, um, without the legendary, more expensive subset of home field advantage cards, I really didn't complete the set. But um, <laughs> but you know what? We'll see. We'll see if I want to go there, um, go down that road. Anyway, there's also what you did, Will, which was just collect one player, in your case, Hyunjin Ryu. If um, loyal listeners will know, we talked about that before as well on past episodes. And uh, what you did was get all the parallels from a particular set. So if any of our listeners were looking for other ideas to do something similar, I was wondering if you guys could suggest other sets to try to complete. 
any other ideas that might be fun to kind of, you know, just be active in the hobby um, on, a, on a somewhat of a tighter budget. Any thoughts? I mean, I guess I'll go first because I have tons of these useless little subsets that I'm collecting. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, everyone knows I'm a big Ryu fan. So, I've collected, I'm trying to collect like all the one of ones of flagship products where Ryu's in a Toronto Blue Jays jersey. Um, right. I collected three of four years of Topps Chrome Sapphire Red out of five. So I have three mm. of those Ryu out of five cards. Um, you know, if you want to make it a little easier and cheaper on the budget and you just kind of like hunting and collecting cards, you could do what I do. And, um, you know, previous episodes, you guys called me the king of li- unlicensed cards. <laughs> you could collect <laughs> some subsets in there. Like, uh, you know, I collected this past year uh, in Don Russ, they had um, Bomb Squad, so it's unlicensed baseball. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and I co- mm-hmm. they had like a out of ninety nine gold, and it's a ten card subset, and I collected those. And really, like it was just like out of the fun of chasing them, and so I mm-hmm. finally finished the subset, and then it in- immediately just tanked in value because obviously these aren't <laughs> cards of any <laughs> interest to anyone. But what's what's really what's really crazy is that there's a Shohei in that subset, and that Shohei mm. alone pays for pretty much the whole <laughs> subset that right. that I have. So it worked out it worked out decently that uh, I'm not too underwater. Um, nice. But I like I like set collecting like that where you get little subsets, and for me it's more about the the art of a card, so how it looks. So if I see like if I see like one you know insert set that just looks really nice then i'll just try collecting that oh and like the last one is uh blank slate i'm a huge fan of blank slate yes so any toronto player who has a blank slate um card so like Demar, damar kyle lowry pascal scotty barnes like there's a t-mac there's a vince carter uh there's a boba shet there's no vladdy jr yet but there's a vladdy senior so i picked that one up so mm. you know stuff like that. Vladdy, That's fun. Yeah. Vladdy Junior doesn't have a blank slate. That's surprising. No, not yet. I, maybe they're holding them for next year or something. But yeah, when you you know when you start collecting these subsets, do you like research in advance to see that it's actually possible to finish the set? Do you know what I mean? Like. Um, you don't want to start collecting and then realize one of those cards in the subset is pretty damn rare. You're oh, like, okay, yeah, I'm never yeah. going to... Do yeah. you know what I mean? One thing I don't understand when I look at like Facebook groups and people are trying to sell their cards and they're like, oh, I got the mini rainbow or I'm almost right. there on the rainbow. I'm just missing the out of one of one and the out of 10 and the <laughs> out of 50 and the out of 99. Yeah. But I have the out of 300, out of 400, out of 500. You're like... <laughs> Why why did you start collecting that way? Yeah. Like so for me right. if I can't get the rarest card of that set, I'm mm-hmm. probably not going to try and collect it. So for example, one of the Ryu years, I think it's uh last year 2021, I never found the platinum like the one of one. And so I'm just not going to collect that subset or that parallel set just cuz if I don't have the one of one, what's the point for me, right? So yeah, yeah, like you're saying, I'll always look for the rarest card first, and then if I can get it, then then I'll go finish the rest. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, Johnny, um, I'm gonna have to lean on the both of you to talk about set collecting because I have even as a kid, I was never a set collector. I don't know, like I think you guys can tell by the way I collect and the way I love going after. You know, PSA 10s, sort of like the best of the best. Um, I was like that as a kid as well. You know, not that I, not to say I spent a lot of money on certain cards, but yeah. um, set collecting wasn't the fun in the hobby for me. It was it was finding rare cards or getting the card that was really valuable or, you know, that that was a part of my fun chase. So I'll, I'm just going to say one thing about in terms of while the market is down for singles collectors. Mm-hmm. And I think... Clark, you kind of touched on this, and I think in a previous episode, uh, a couple of episodes back, 
while the market is down, a big trend right now has been PC chasing, right? Like I think a lot of people, right, even yeah. in their vlogs of, of card shows and whatnot, I think a lot of people have kind of revert, sidetracked from investment and going after PC cards, like things that the, you know. Right. So I think yep. what, what's really fun, I, at least for me, and I don't know about others, but, you know, your favorite player, you know, a lot of times your favorite player is not McDavid and it's not, LeBron. It could be right. somebody on your hometown team or somebody less valuable. And I think this is a great mm-hmm. time to like, like again, Will also touched on this. It's a great time to kind of go after maybe the super factor of your favorite player. Or maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, dare I say it, if you have more money, like a logo man of your favorite player. Or like for, my, for me on the hockey side, like my two of the more, of more recent uh, in the last 15, 20 years, like my two favorite players have been Patrick Kane and Ryan Getzlaff. So I've always kind of slowly been on the look out for an NHL shield one of one upper deck, which is kind of like the flawless logo man equivalent, right? Like obviously the price has to be right. It has to be very affordable. I'm not going to spend, you know, thousands yeah. of dollars in it, in it. But if there's some good value, like I would any condition, it could be like a PSA six. It could be raw. It could be a dinged corner. But I think. Um, now is the time if, if you're PC hunt collecting, you can go after the more rare car- cards of your favorite player. And, I, you know, for some of the lesser known players, super factors and stuff are like very, very attainable, right? Like you could probably pick it up for 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something pretty cheap, right? So, yeah. Um, sure. yeah. And I remember um, you mentioned in a previous episode, um, you were thinking of starting to collect canadian basketball players yes that is <laughs> have all, you ever thought of it's always on my mind <laughs> starting <laughs> and so my thing is is that i don't you know you guys know me like i, I want to trade my way through everything and <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i just don't have enough time at the expo to be like bin surfing right because you like we're gonna go we're the expo's tomorrow we're gonna go like right. you and i have three four hours at the most like i'm not gonna be there yeah 12 hours on Friday, 12 hours on Saturday, 12 hours on Sunday. So uh, my problem last year is I, I was going to try to start it. But mm-hmm. by the time I walk around, I'm like out of time. And I don't have time to look at <laughs> bargain bins to, to try to find like some of the, the patch autos of some obscure Canadian basketball players. Um, and then the ones in right. cases will be like Shea Gilgis Alexander for 1200 bucks. Like I'm not going to I'm not going to start with Shea Gilgis. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's kind of on pause, but I mean, I think once I do make the trade for that first one or two, even if it isn't sort of like a no-name Canadian, I think that's where the ball will start rolling. But I haven't, I've been a little bit nervous to okay. start it because I don't want to spend curious. money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just bring that up because that could be another way of, uh, another idea of how to set collect, right? Like if you're a Korean, right. you collect Korean players, that right. might be of interest to you. Um the only other idea I had right now is, and I thought about doing this, but I don't know how difficult it will be to complete or how big the set will end up being is inscriptions, like inscription autos, mm. right? So, um, you know, of, of, of different players um, that say something unique, right? And, and, you know, depending on the player, it could, it could cost a lot. And and if it's a no name, if it's just kind of funny, then you might be able to get um, a good deal on it, right? But I want to have kind of a theme. It just can't be any inscription. So like I need kind of a guiding theme before I start collecting something like that. Because, you know, I'm sure there's probably more than I expect in terms of people that inscribe their autograph cards. And I don't want to feel trapped into feeling like I need to get them all, right? So, so yeah, just an idea that I've been kind of thinking about. I like that. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of other ways uh, for our listeners. If you have one and you want to share that, you can always reach out to us at Cards to the Moon on Instagram, all one word. And uh, we can um, follow up with that um, on a future episode. All right, um, let's move on to our next segment. And it's called Just a Thought. Okay, we did this once before with Hyung. And, and I thought it was a fun segment where essentially uh, we brainstormed different ideas on what could make the hobby better or at the very least more interesting. And I know not all of them are going to be winners, okay? But all 
ideas have to start somewhere, right? So I have a few in mind and uh, I'll get the ball rolling and, and then afterwards you guys could jump in if you have ideas of your own, right? But the purpose of this is just to get your honest feedback and uh, always feel free to add to the idea if you think it's got legs, all right, or future potential. Okay, so I'll start with something more tame. You know, custom cards, a big thing in the hobby, right? Or a growing thing in the hobby. I, you know, I, I'm seeing more accounts by artists that are creating custom cards. I'm thinking that why don't, you know, uh, Tops or Fanatics just create a limited edition subset by pick an artist that does a really good job on custom cards no copies so it's not like the tops project 2020 what was that called the, the you know um where they had the mint like 50 60 different artists right um and right. they mass produced it mm-hmm. not like that no the custom they just make 10 5 or 10 unique custom cards and then you just randomly insert them into a particular set you know and, the, and the, each one's autographed by the artist so if it's a painter like the, um, maybe you know those canvas stocks, like uh, a lot some hockey card sets have. Right. You know, you can maybe have uh, an artist paint ten drawings of of a hockey player or uh, an athlete, and then just insert them in. Just a thought. <laughs> I hate it. I hate. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Are you serious? Yeah, it I reminds me of you. You know how Tops has sketch cards. Oh, yeah. From like the artist. Right. And I swear, some of the sketches, I'm like, <laughs> I, my, my five year old daughter could have done that. So I'm always a little dubious of like, what if I, you know, the worst feeling is you, you're hit, you open your pack and you have this monster, you have this hit and you're like, oh my God, is this going to be a monster? And it's a one of one sketch card autographed by the artist, and you don't know who that artist is, and so that kind of feels bad <laughs> if it's inside of a pack. But also, mm-hmm. like I started seeing tons of people create their own custom cards, like in Facebook groups. I can't tell you how many people I've blocked because I just don't want to see their content, <laughs> and because like <laughs> most of them, most of them are terrible, like. They're just like using an exacto knife and trying to like make these cards beautiful. And I'm like, you have no artistic skill. <laughs> so wow, such a harsh so critic. So I didn't savage. expect that from Will. <laughs> well, well I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like there are there are some artists who make custom cards that look beautiful. Like um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I bought I bought a, a out of five Vladdy card from this. Um, uh, card card account and, and they make their own custom cards and I was like wow those cards are really beautiful and I was hoping they mm-hmm. would just throw me an extra card uh, when they shipped me the Vladdy one but they didn't so, <laughs> so if you know if it's a really really nice looking card then sure but there's so much crap and the people that Tops already chose to put some cust- like to put some sketch cards in their packs they're terrible mm. so I don't trust Tops to do a good job. Mm. Good point. Good point. But, you know, like if you have an artist, like a, you know, like everyone knows this artist, maybe. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I like Vincent renowned. Van Gogh. I, w- I was about <laughs> right, to go there. I, I think yeah. one of the main issues in the past, the sketch card, no one knows who the artist is. You know, outside of right. maybe some obscure, you know, you happen to be a fan of their art. Um, but I, I swear Tops did something more recent. I, I don't think you can get... I think you caught, could have got him in packs, like Luke the Cardist. I think there were some artists that were featured. Am I wrong? I feel like something did happen. Uh, but anyways. Yeah. I, Pops I Gallery, think point, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, point being, okay. I think the execution has to be important. I think having hobby-known artists, custom card artists, as a part of the launch, rather than just random sketch artists, I think that's important. Um and I think the aesthetics too. Like if I don't know, maybe I'm the only one about this, but I'd like to see like the engraved one of one embossed rather than like the artist say one of one. I think that would be like a nice touch. Um, and I like I think in, in terms of card sets rather than a full brand new image of like a custom of some image yeah. or, or painting, I'd rather see the image on the card and maybe the 
you know, how artists paint around it and make a new design. So if it's like LeBron's tops chrome, it'll be LeBron's tops chrome, but there's like trees and stuff in the background or something, something like that, right? But it's still a LeBron right. tops chrome card. Um, I think that'd yeah. be kind of cool. So I think the execution will be important and um, the hobbyist, but the idea I, I do like. I, I like it. Okay. Well, we split. We split on that one. All right. Um, okay. Next idea. Okay. And then, um, and then uh, one of you guys can go if you have one. Okay. You know how, um, I think they do this in the States too, right? But you know, when you buy beer bottles um, or beer and liquor and you return the bottles for, uh, for some money, right? Like you get your deposit back. I feel like we need a system for base cards. Like, you know, the, the, there's, you know, when we rip open hobby boxes or jumbo boxes, ton of base cards what do you do with them right but if you if you have a place go to your local card sh- um, shop right and they have a deal with the card manufacturers you know you could get you know cents and then it just adds up and then you know um, especially if you if you rip a lot at least you have a place to go and and you could get store credit you know and then that's how you get more people going to their local card shops too so it has a double kind of benefit there right you get rid of your base cards that no one likes um, kind of like the bottle return system that we have for for alcohol, right? What, what about a um, what about a really juicy rebate for collecting the entire base set? Oh, okay, that's a, a nice twist. Because mm-hmm. then you you would collect the try to collect the set, so that kind of encourages people to collect the set. And then tops could you know they'll do whatever with it. Maybe they'll donate it to hospitals and kids and stuff like that, but. That's a way where you can gather the masses into collecting sets. It's 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 a lot of work though. I feel it, it is. Yeah, <laughs> you know some some internet tops has to count every single card in that set. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 creating jobs too with this the, idea. Okay, that poor unpaid college intern is <laughs> <laughs> getting a college credit for counting, ev- yeah. making sure there's no duplicates in a gets, gets a job with tops, card thinking it's going to be set. the best job in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I you know just uh, just an idea. All right, you guys have any? Because I got a couple more after this. Well, just to add on to what you were saying, I think uh, at the card show tomorrow that we're going mm-hmm. to, Upper Deck always has that promotion where if you rip um, like a hobby box or something, you you return the wrapper like it's a wrapper redemption. So oh, then you don't have huh. to waste. Uh, you don't have to care, lug around 600 base cards, but you just take the wrapper. You guys don't participate in this? Yeah, there's a whole upper deck uh, wrapper redemption. I just never do it because I don't rip hockey. So. No, I don't rip hockey either. Yeah. So sorry, you don't Once have in a to blue moon. carry... Well, so you just return the wrapper? Like yeah, the card so at the show, wrapper? you buy like yeah. a hobby box... Mm-hmm. And then you redeem the you go to the hopper uh, the upper deck uh, booth booth yeah and then you just uh, you trade it in and they give you some like you know show exclusive pack or something like that. Yeah. So what happens to the base cards? Oh, they don't. Want, that's the thing. They're smart. They don't want your base cards. <laughs> they just they just want <laughs> they just want proof that you bought a, a hobby pack or a hobby. Oh, box. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. I'm, but this nobody, idea I'm trying to nobody wants your base cards. <laughs> I tried to give away base cards at Halloween, and kids are like, "Nah." <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine were a hit, man! It was gone instantly. Oh yeah, yeah, well, like a hundred packs. Neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! All right, I, I you know I I feel like something can be done with the base cards. Maybe I can't think of it on in this episode, but I'll. I'll I'll go back to the drawing board um, for for the next segment. Next time we do this segment, card All card right, flicking um, competition becomes a <laughs> pro card flicking. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, I, there's something there. I think. All right. Okay, uh, um, you guys got one. Uh, I have I have one that I've always it's always been on my mind, and I don't know if it makes sense, but uh, mm-hmm. either if you get a. Uh, a redemption card which everybody hates yep. or like i don't know for me i love graded some people the purists will be like no i don't want my card in a slab but i 
I, I think if you get a redemption and it's, and it's, you know, it, it's a crappy way to get, hit a card. I think if you redeem it, it should come, it should come graded. So like Panini or Top mm. should pay for the grading and it comes slapped if you get a redemption or something cool. Like not, you don't just get the redemption of an auto back. Like the player who is owed an auto, um, does an inscription or something special. Like something has to be a little bit right. more special because you get the re- redemption. And because it's such a crappy experience, I think they should do something about. Because you know, like we've heard, um, what's his face from Fanatics mention, like redemptions is going to just they're going to try to eliminate as best they can, but it's just a part of the game. Like there's going to be athletes who are lazy or they're too busy and they can't sign and they they can't bring it in time, right? And I think the company should should pay for that and and make it a bit of a bonus for the hobbyists. I like it. That's a pretty cool, cool idea. But I mean, the only thing is that if they have a, such a hard time with the current redemption system, getting just the autograph card, how much uh, more difficult will it be to get the player to do something a little extra? And then, and then you're waiting twice as long, <laughs> you know, for the, for the special redemption card. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we we'll just stick to the uh, grading. <laughs> the grading, yeah, that's a nice touch. Yeah, I like it. Well, you got one? I, I this is why I'm the fourth co-host. Um, I <laughs> I forget what the premise of this uh, section was. What are we doing? <laughs> this is, it's called just a thought. So any just brainstorm ideas on trying to make oh, the hobby? Oh, okay. Just more the fun. Th- just the thought. Yeah. No more taco fractor. I'm really? so sad because, you know, a little bit behind the peeling behind the curtain of uh, yeah. Cards to the Moon. I was supposed to come on a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and uh, when the Taco Fractor was like really, really in the news. And I had so many thoughts about them and I just had <laughs> nobody to share them with. But yeah, none of none of those kinds of uh, product placement um, promotion like just advertising against, marketing yeah. cards. You just why? What's wrong with that? I, I actually one of my ideas is a play on that, but I oh, want to hear okay, why no, you let don't me like. Hear your, no, no, let me hear okay. your idea first. Maybe you'll sway me. Okay, ready? Uh, so, how about a pizza fractor? Okay, <laughs> so hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it's because I love pizza, and I'm sure there's millions of people that love pizza. This would be more appealing than tacos, I think, right? But you know, like the taco fractor, we talked about this on the pod. It just seemed like a like an idea that was thrown together last minute. You know what I mean? Like we're collecting these, and then a lot of people got screwed over because they're buying it for a thousand bucks, and then then you find out it's for whoever steals the base in the World Series. That's I mean, they thought of that way late in the process, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so yeah. with this pizza fractor, right? You just it's all about intentionality, right? You gotta you gotta have a plan. This is I think this will work. So. In next year's um, whatever set the the fractors in Topps Chrome, um, you insert or you create a set of fifty power hitters. Okay, so you got fifty names on the checklist. Okay, that have a pizza fractor card, and let's say they're power hitters. Okay, and they're all numbered to five, just like the taco fractors were. So you got two hundred fifty card set in total, and the batter that hits the most homers in that season gets pizza for life right so you pull a you pull a Shohei or you pull a Pete Alonzo just a heavy Giancarlo Stanton like you're not going to get like um Santiago Espinal pizza fractor card because it's you know obviously you're not going to win but this will make it interesting like and then you know when you get it throughout the year right then then you could you could buy sell as well throughout the year because you know what exactly it's for do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> you should see the look on their faces right now <laughs> hey listen i'm the my main knock against the taco fractor was mm-hmm. they didn't tell people beforehand so i think people were yeah. again people were expecting yeah. it'd be like a meet and greet exactly. so just something incredible and it ended up being the the joke was oh i bet it's tacos for life it actually ended up being taco which was ridiculous so i think if you <laughs> if you if you come out with like uh-huh. a pizza fractor and it's explained from the beginning. This is the premise of the chase. Right. I, li- yeah. I actually like that idea. I think if you're going to make, 
if you're going to make parallels outside of the OG, like there's gold, blue, all the OG colors. Yeah. If you're going to make shimmers and all that, I'd rather get rid of shimmers and all the rest be pizzas and tacos and Oreo fractors. <laughs> I would be so much more happier yeah. because at least you're chasing a, some something outside of the hobby. That's cool, right? Give me a, 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 a stupid... A stupid parallel card but it has some sort of utility behind it that's amazing because that just adds to the amount of chase in the product i think that's Mm -hmm. really fun i I like that idea but i i would i would like it in replacement of all of those donut circles and all those other crappy parallels that have zero meaning in the hobby get rid of all of that trash and give me Mm -hmm. all of the pizza fractors and taco fractors yeah good with donut fractor donut Donut fractor for for anyone donuts for life yeah, do it. You know, just have a set of pitchers, and if anyone throws a no hitter, you know, you qualify for a donut, donuts for life. You, it's endless. These see, endless. That's, <laughs> see, that's the that's the really sad thing. It took you five minutes to come up with an idea significantly better than what Tops <laughs> came up with. Like John says, it was like the fact that they just weren't honest with us at the beginning, and then <laughs> right. the kind of like, like. I think I told you guys my thoughts on this was this is the premise of an episode of The Office where Michael <laughs> Scott screws over or screws everyone in the office over and then he's like, Don't worry, end of the work day. I got a great prize for you. <laughs> I got a great surprise. And it's like ice cream sandwiches. This is like <laughs> like I don't know if it's so meta, like if Tops is so meta that they're like doing like irony or or what's that like like there's some sort of commentary that they're making about like (laughs) yeah but i just yeah but i like donut fractor (laughs) because man some some uh crispy cream donuts for life you know what like and that and you know they're partnering with with other corporations other brands win-win i'm just saying yeah. Oh, uh, my last thought was, uh, yeah, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be the parallel, though, right? Like, if if I opened up a pack of cards and there was like this redemption card that says you have a one in five chance of winning this something for life reward, mm-hmm. then sure, but don't put tacos as a parallel to the card and then make me think like, well, it's out of five, so it must be like like a valuable parallel. Like it's not. It's it has nothing to do with. The, I don't know. Anyway, it's over. It's been a someone, moment. Someone, yeah. So someone's still upset about the taco I'm fractor so, rollout. I'm so annoyed. <laughs> uh, well, I you know if Tops is listening, um, I'm telling it this is way better than how the taco fractor rollout happened. But you know, despite their screw up, like there was a lot of attention on this. Do you know what I mean? Like we're still talking about it. So I guess it worked inadvertently for Tops and Fanatics. Wait, hang on. How okay. many? Who who won the Taco Fractor again? Who was the player? To tell Marte. 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 Do you we see know? on Tops? So, so are there still fifteen thousand dollar Taco Fractor cards out there in the wild? The yeah, chase is still there. a couple. <laughs> right. I think like a how couple many? of them were sold. A couple of them came out. But I'm sure there's still some in packs, right? Yeah. Okay. There so, might be one or two, I think. Yeah. So there still are tacos for life in the wild that yeah. are attainable. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go taco fractor hunting. Uh, on the <laughs> Tops uh, Instagram site, they showed one winner. Did you see it? The, oh, no, I didn't one see winner it. Somebody actually submitted. <laughs> oh, that's right. I Marte did see that. steal the right, base right, right. and then realizing realizing he just won tacos for yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. so, so that was kind of cool, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like right. but that's why it's so much cooler if you come up with it before or you, exactly. you tell us what's happening before so we can root for it and cheer for it yeah and mm-hmm. you can bet for it you can bet against it like you could sell early but like we had no idea so like these like boba shet taco fractors were like trying uh-huh. to buy it shohei otani oh my goodness god knows the blue oh. jays aren't making it into the world series so <laughs> it's like what's the point well i almost bought a boba shed taco fractor i know oh, me man, too we I'm were so watching glad. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right got one more um 
Do you remember back in the day, Stadium Club Basketball, right? Had something called Super Team Cards. Super so Team it's like, Cards. It's like, um, it's kind of like what we see in the top sets now. You know, when it's like a, uh, you just, in the top sets, there's like, it's usually horizontal and it says the Los Angeles Dodgers and you see oh, teammates. I love those up. cards. Do you I love, love them? I, I, I love can't them. stand them. It's just so garbage. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And you know, I, I maybe it's because I get a ton of the Milwaukee Brewers. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, at least be the Jays. But anyway, they're back in the day. They're Stadium Club Super Team cards. It's kind of the same concept. New York Knicks, and it was a Super Team. And um, I think if you had the card and they made it to a playoffs or they won, you also get something. So this was like in the '90s. You know, when we collected in the junk wax era. And I remember I had it, and uh, I, I I pulled it, and then. Um, the local card shop was going to buy it for like 20 bucks, which was a lot for a kid, you know, you know what I mean? But, you know, me being naive, I'm like, no, it's worth more. And then when the <laughs> Knicks, of course, didn't get to the playoffs or didn't do well, it was worth zero dollars, you know what I mean? So, um, but I'm just thinking with, you know, uh, bringing it back, right? This, whether it's for baseball or basketball. Um, and, you know, if you have, a, like a limited edition of the team card. So if you got a Toronto Blue Jays number to five or 10, whatever you want to make it, and they win or they get to the World Series, you get a free ticket to the game. That'd be cool. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. Yep. End off strong. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Again, I don't know any, what it is. Yeah. Any parallel that is outside of the OG colors, make, give them some sort of utility. I am all on board for that. Even if it's something small, I'm I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, more chase the better for rippers like us. Like at least, at least make the taco fractor cards. <laughs> like, yeah. Even if your guy didn't steal the first base in the World Series, if you have like a Boba Shat or a Shohei taco fractor just let them redeem it for like 20 bucks gift card at taco bell or oh yeah we know, talked like, about that yeah yeah, yeah like a hundred dollar gift card ridiculous yeah just just do right by everyone Better than nothing yes yeah. totally agree so I feel, I, <laughs> for some reason i'm still waiting for that announcement because i'm like this is just ridiculous that people that bought it for a thousand bucks like literally for over a thousand bucks, I just got screwed over, right? Yeah. The yeah. the Shohei Taco Fractor, yeah, it's yeah, taco uh, tacos uh, tops <laughs> needs to to me needs to make it right. Let's let's begin a petition for that. <laughs> um, all right, so let's end off on that note. <laughs> so uh, we'll go on to the next segment, our regular weekly segment we call Pick One. And this is when the three of us throw out a couple of cards or sets, and then we debate which one we'd rather buy or invest in. All right. So Hyung's not here, but John, do you want to get things started today? Yeah. So in honor of uh, Danny, sorry, Danny, I, I couldn't be here to to chat it up <laughs> with you, but he, you gave him the it was a hilarious segment where you guys talked about the um, what was it the the the, the quick which answers, the quick questions. Canadian. No, no, the ones about the yeah, Canadians. Right. So I'm going to do like yeah. an American versus Canadians themed question in honor of Denny. Okay. It's going to be hockey related. So we're going to go pick Americans versus Canadians. Which side do you want to invest in? Jack Hughes, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane. So I purposely picked one veteran and one hometown Maple Leaf versus McKinnon, Mitch Marner, Sidney Crosby. And obviously, I also purposely left up McDavid because if I put in McDavid, I think the answer would have been a little bit more easier. So Jack Hughes, Austin Matthews, Patrick Kane, McKinnon, Marner, Sidney Crosby. You investing in the three Americans or the three Canadians? Go ahead, I'll, well. I'll go first because I'm useless with hockey. I think it boils down to <laughs> Crosby versus Kane. How many cups does Kane have? Two? The Blackhawks uh, I think twice? he has three. Three. And then how many does Crosby have? Uh, I should know this. Four? Three or four? I'm going to go Canadians because I, I rate Crosby greater than Kane. So I'd rather be collecting Crosby. Crosby and has three. 
And if you don't win championships, if you don't win championships, it doesn't matter. I don't want to collect your card. Unless you're DeMar DeRozan. (laughs) I love you, DeMar DeRozan. I love you forever. Uh, I think it's an easy one for me, too. And I don't know if it's because there's an inherent Canadian bias. But, Mm. yeah, you know, um, I'm going with the Canadian side. Um, Who did you say it was on? Jack Hughes and Mitch Marner is a wash, in my opinion. Okay. Um, Then there you got Austin Matthews and McKinnon. McKinnon. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll give a slight edge to Matthews there, mm-hmm. um, just just in terms of the market, like not in terms of like their actual talent, but you know, just um, uh, sports card market wise in terms of value. And um, I think Crosby, like Will said, just um, you know, I, I think he's far superior um, in in the hobby than than Patrick Kane is. So Crosby was a clincher. I don't know. I was trying to think if there was a, if you put someone else instead of Crosby, that would have made it harder. Um, but I couldn't think of it on the spot. But with Crosby there, definitely Team Canada. Interesting. All right, um, my fellow Canadians are gonna probably hate this, but I am going with the Amer- I'm going with the American side. Wow. I think Patrick Kane and Crosby, <laughs> the veterans, are slow growth. So investment wise, it's not you're not gonna really see any sort of relative return. Uh, until they're really, really close to retiring, which they are. I think these guys maybe got two or three years left. Uh, So there is a time to pick them, but it's not now. And then between the two remaining, I don't think Jack Hughes and Marner are wash. I think Jack Hughes is uh, has the ability to... I mean, he's already gone up quite a bit in value. But Marner, I, I don't know. I mean, we're in Toronto. I don't know how... Marner is viewed outside of Toronto on how popular he is. I'd imagine he's not that popular. And to be honest, even within Toronto, he's not that popular anymore either, right? I think a lot mm-hmm. of Torontonians are kind of, I mean, they're a little bit, I think their patience is wearing thin with both Matthews, Matthews and Marner's, but at least, at least Matthews is scoring goals like crazy, right? So I feel like Marner's kind of falling out of favor in the Toronto land. And then you got, um, and then you got McKinnon. So I, I actually I think Matthews is a huge bounce back candidate. We mentioned we talked about that, and he's been playing lights out. Uh, I think he's going to hunt for um, the uh, Rocket Richard Trophy. I think Jack Hughes is going to be up there with the scoring leaders, probably in the top five by the end of the year. Uh, I give obviously the edge to Crosby, but you know Patrick Kane could also make some noise too because he's about to sign. He's healthy. He's probably two to four weeks away from signing. With a Stanley Cup contender, he's he's in the dis- decision mode right now. So I think that could give him a, a bit of a bump. So I'm I'm picking the American side for investment. Oh wow, did not expect that. But uh, yeah, great points. If I threw in Ovechkin, Malkin, <laughs> <laughs> a Russian team, and uh, this is the, this, oh, I was I, like while you're talking, I'm like, I was oh, I, like I was that. actually going like to put a, bo- a C bonus. You're, okay. you're actually you're right on. I was going to do as a, as a side yeah. bonus a third one v one v one. Go ahead. It was going to be yeah. Ovi, Kucherov, and Panarin, the, Kucherov. the Russians. And you can see Kucherov and Panarin, I think, are top three in scoring or something like that. So, and then you have Ovi with the goal okay. scoring, right? Goal scoring record. So, well, Kucherov was my third guy too. Uh, I didn't think of Panarin. I was going to put Malkin in there instead. Right. That's so, also good. I was gonna put in Fedorov. Is that <laughs> Sergey? Is that a, But I don't know how much his rookie cards are. <laughs> so, um, would any of those guys? Uh, the would the Russian team replace? It? I guess he would. Um, the your American pick or your Canadian pick will. Yeah, I I don't know why I love I love Ovi the most. So I mm. would go I would go with the Ovi the Ovi crew. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. Um, I can't blame you. I think the OV going for the goal scoring record. I mean, he. I think he's off to a really slow start. I, how many has he even scored a goal? He must have scored a goal. But anyways, yeah, he yeah. needs like what 70, 70 more. Or something. Yeah, I mean, he's he's gonna get it. He he he's still a horse, so he's gonna he's gonna get it. But um, I think that he's There's two goals this season. Two goals, yeah. He's just absolutely slow start. He might end up with like twenty five goals this year, which is not what people are expecting. Um, but I th- regardless, I think he's going to hit it. He's not, you know, he's not retiring. He's again, he's also probably two, three years out minimum. So yeah, 
That's it. Ovechkin's a big pick. Ovechkin cards, like people should be going after Ovechkin cards. Yep. We, and we talked about that before, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Good one. Um, Will, you want to go next? Yep. Yep. So in the spirit of my weird collecting habits, because <laughs> I don't ever get the things that people typically get, my 1v1 is uh, a one-of-one one non-rookie card. So like a Topps Chrome Super Fractor versus some mid-tier level parallel of a rookie card. So that might be a little confusing. So I'll give you a couple examples, okay? So we'll start with NBA. Luka Doncic. I know, Clark, you just picked up that beauty, that beauty Luka card. His Black Shimmer Prism 1 of 1 for 2019, it sold for $9,000 this past month. His 2021 Black Shimmer Prism sold for 5600 in April of this year. So at that range, somewhere between 6000 and 9000 you could get one of those one of ones. Or you can get the 2018 Choice Tiger Stripe PSA 10. Or the blue 199, blue out of 199 BGS 95 for about 7,500. Both of those sold this year. So which one would you pick out of those two? The Black Shimmer one of one of a non rookie year or a rookie year. I think Choice Tiger Stripe is not numbered, right? I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah, but the blue is out of 199. Wow, I didn't know the Choice Tiger came down that much that's crazy i don't know why the choice tiger is worth as much as it is i like, yeah that's true it, 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 yeah it, it was a, a bit of a trendy a yeah. trendy card back in a zebra and, and type can i give you one more example i'll give you one more example i have four examples but i'll just give you one more so acuna his tops chrome super fractor in 2023 it just sold in September for $2,500. His 2022 Topps Chrome Super Factor sold in May of this year for $2,700. So right around the same, 25, 26, 27. So for around that price in August, you could have gotten the 2018 Gold Wave out of 50. So are you getting like... The one of one of a later year flagship versus some mid tier, mid level. Right. Yeah. I th- <sighs> oh, this is a good one, man. I I think Will is on to. I, I we touched on this a little bit in previous episodes. But I think he is on to something when you're comparing investment of a one-on-one non-rookie year versus an equivalent valued rookie year one-of-one. Um, because it's as, not a one-on-one rookie year. Right, and it's not a one-on-one rookie. Because, I mean, if, if you're looking at uh, black prisms or you're looking at super factors on the baseball side, you know, people will say, oh, whatever, it's not the rookie year. How many? There's going to be so many of them. But really... You know, what's a per guy's career, 10, 15, 20 years max, right? You're going to have 10, 15, 20 flagship superfractors. Like, that's still exactly. less number exactly. than some of the rarest of the rookie cards, right? So, oh, that's a tough one. I, this is, I think I thought it was an easy question, but <laughs> specifically to Luca, because I, I do desire the 2018, the rare. So it's it's really hard for me to not pick the 2018 Luca, but specifically to anything else, like the Cunha example, I think I would go Super Factor of a certain year because like the 2020, like this year's, this year's Tops Chrome or Tops Design, I love. I mentioned it when it first came out with the the pro the the portrait image at the bottom, that kind of like old school feel mixed in with the modern with the bordering, like everything about this year's graphic on the card i love and then the super factor just sends it to the moon for me so if i'm a hard if i'm a huge acuna fan or i know will you're going to talk about vladdy if, if you do have a pc card i don't know i think i'd rather have 
because I, I thought because I like this particular year so much, and some people might like 2017, or some people might like 2021 the best. I, I think I think your money's still pretty safe investment wise. Plus, you get a pretty cool PC card, super fractor of your favorite player or of your investment player. I I'm gonna pick the uh, I'm gonna pick the one of one. Ooh! Wow! Mm-hmm. Wow! Oh man! I was I was waiting for the classic John twist at the end, <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't come. It didn't come. Um, it's easy for me because I am definitely a rookie card snob. So I think there's premium put on the rookie card year, even though it's not a one of one. And the counter to the super factor is that. There are so many mid-tier sets these days with one-of-one cards. So it's not really just 15 one-of-ones for a certain player these days, especially modern, right? And and because there's like multiple sets that have one-of-ones. So I think the Super Fractor is kind of devalued in that sense a little bit. No, you know, but, then, I think but it, then you have to also include all the lower very lower quality rookie cards too. Ooh. Right, but I mean, the, so you okay, have to but, stick with just flagship because I was thinking about that too. But you have to stick with just flagship. Okay, fair, fair. I'm still going rookie. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the ones that you gave me, the Luca definitely a rookie. I'll take the blue one of one. Oh yeah, that that's day. that's Video yeah. Five over the black shimmer, uh, and I, I do agree though. The the Acuna one is a little bit more difficult, and I think it it might be somewhat player dependent as well um, right. uh, to a certain degree. But I'll, I'll, I would, I don't know. I feel like if I had the Topps Chrome Acuna 2022 or 2023, it would be cool at first. But then over the years, I'm like, oh, I wish I had the rookie gold wave. <laughs> 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 so everything in my collection is like, oh, you know, I, I'm a rookie card collector first and foremost. And then I got this one 2023 Topps Chrome Super. Like, that just doesn't fit in my set. So I'll, right. I'll stay true to myself. I'm going with the rookie side. Does it does it sway you in any way that... I, and I don't know if it's a real sale because it seems mm-hmm. really high. But uh, Shohei's 2022 Topps Chrome Super Factor sold for $9,000. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's definitely player dependent. I'll, I'll, go, sh- yeah. the, I'll go the Shohei Super for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, like case. It, you know, like the thing that the thing that I love about one of ones is just like there's no way to really price them. It's it usually boils down to one, but most likely two or three crazy people <laughs> who are just competing against each other. So like like you said, it's player dependent, but it's also like who's got eyes on it dependent for that week yes you know so it's like yeah like that show hey that auction for nine thousand dollars it doesn't make sense like it, you know there's no other super factor non-rookie that sells right. for that amount so this is so a good point super fan yeah so i like that i like that one-on-one is just so volatile you just don't know what to expect yeah. I get that question a lot too from people that visit Fiker guys. Like, I got this one of one. How much is it worth? I'm like, no idea, man. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, worth, it's like, it's worth yeah. ex- like I hate when people, you know, when people post it. I hate that. But what I hate even more is the people who comment like really, like, like um, just really sarcastically. It's worth what someone's willing to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, thanks buddy yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so when i go through i'm like first of all you shouldn't post this but second of all you shouldn't comment like that <laughs> like but i mean like as bad as bad as it is like it really is just whatever someone's willing to pay for it at that time <laughs> right. like i i day. you know we talked about how i i got lucky and i hit a uh super fractor of uh, manny machado right and uh it was just like a, a insert one so it wasn't like a flagship and I was like, what could this be worth? You know, some comparable like players like Soto had one that sold right before. And I put it up in auction and it went way below what I thought it was going to go. And that's just because those were the eyes that were looking at it. And that's in the end, it was worth what it was worth. So, yeah, 
So what side are you picking? You didn't say. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm. You know me. I love, I love weird cards. I love different <laughs> cards. I love collecting supers. Like you know, I'm, it's really bad. Hyung Hyung told me when I first got back into cards, you should, you shouldn't focus on base. You should focus on really low numbered stuff. And I'm learning right. his. I'm learning that lesson like three years late, and now I'm starting to collect all this like one of one stuff and low numbered stuff but i don't have budget for like rookie one of ones so i might as well collect some vet <laughs> one of ones exactly oh well, you know timing timing works out now because everything's down so yeah, there you go yeah. okay uh good one i like that one too uh all right we'll end off the show with my one v1 um i'm gonna do uh hobby boxes okay um so the 2023 tops chrome update Hobby Box is coming out uh, next week, I believe, November 15th. And that has the MLB debut patch, which we talked about on the show before. Um, in Canada, it's about 200 bucks. All right. So you could figure that out in American dollars, say, let's say 150, 160. And um, that, and I think there's uh, one auto guaranteed. And then there's like base parallels or refractors um, within that set. So you're willing to pay 200 Canadian dollars for that or... Would you just go for the tops, 2023 tops update paper, the one with Mike Trout? Um, it's one of those auto or relic, right? But it is it is considerably cheaper at 120, 125, I believe, um, Canadian dollars. So which one would you rather go for? What's the chase in the paper? Is there anything special? Because um, the debut patches are only from Chrome, right? Yes. Yes, and I can't remember if the Halloween parallels, which we talked about, are not in the hobby box or oh, if they're just right. not. I think those are retail only. Blasters? Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'll make it very simple. So whoever's in the. Give me a. Yeah. Regardless of what comes in hot paper, give me a Chrome update. I think that's going to be the hot one. You know, the odds of you getting a debut patch is next to impossible, but at least you got a chance. Like Jim Carrey, like Jim Carrey <laughs> says. And. Um, and it's Chrome. I think for me, ripping Chrome, Chromium products is so much nicer, so much more fun. Paper is, and Hyung mentions this all the time, and I agree, paper is so boring to rip. And it's guaranteed auto, right, for the, the Chrome. So I'd rather pay the extra. I'm going for the Chrome. Okay. I choose, I choose paper. Oh. <sighs> Because I don't really like this set, like the cards. So I'd like to spend as little money losing as little money as possible. <laughs> I You don't like it, eh? But, well, I, but I just don't you're... think there's any big there's no big names, right? You can't you can't make your money back easily. You know, like there's no you're you're just like basically hoping for like a debut patch or something monster right Mm -hmm. yeah you got your rare parallels do you not get that extra enjoyment ripping chrome versus paper um to be honest i haven't ripped oh no i've ripped a ton of chrome i I almost lied uh uh, carbon carol and tops update that's probably the bigger chase in terms of rookie you know what i like ripping both Mm. I like I like both of them because uh you know with paper you know there's a bunch of filler and you know like in the middle of the pack that's kind of where it's where you're going to get some nice stuff. It's kind of exciting and chrome is just like what's it, four cards usually. And so it's the same yeah it's the same level of excitement for me. Cuz I just disregard base, right? It's like your, your tops update hits I'm showing on the screen but you know paper. There's there's some hits, yeah, oh, for paper. Damn. Some good prices, damn. Shohei, Acuna, Dual Auto, Redemption. Yeah, but those are those are the monsters that you have to hit. <laughs> that's, that's true. But I mean, like, you're, for Topps Chrome Update, you're, you're hoping for the MLB debut patch, really, right? Yeah, that's it. That's all you can hope for, so. Okay, you're going, so split. I uh, break the tie. Um I gotta try to go for the MLB debut patch. <laughs> just gotta, just gotta buy that lotto ticket and pay the two hundred bucks. Yes, for the Topps Chrome update. 
<laughs> so, and and you're right. I feel like with paper, it's like oh, this it's, everything is garbage. You know, like especially when it's made of <laughs> yeah, paper. Yeah. With Chrome, it's it, it's a, it's a, the exact same value, both zero dollars at the end of the day <laughs> with the base cards. But it's like oh, this is you know more weighty and uh, more likely to keep it around. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm with John on this one. All right. Uh, we appreciate all our listeners, as always, for tuning in to the show. Thanks, Will, for again, for filling in for Hyung. And uh, I'm sure we'll have you back on uh, sooner than later. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a brand new episode for you guys on Friday. So talk to you then. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5 Card Guys. Or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards or John at Trade You at Recess. You can also check us out at fivecardguys.com. Thanks again and hope to connect soon.